Apple said in the spring that M1 Ultra is the final chip in their lineup with just the Mac Pro to complete the transition to Apple Silicon. Rumor is we could see the M2, the next generation of Apple Silicon, within a month at WWDC. So what is M2 and should you be excited for it? Let's find out. Want the latest Apple news leaks and rumors? Subscribe and ring the bell. This video was suggested by Patreon Evan Rogers who asked me to update the Beyond M1 video that we made in November of 2020. So here we are. If you want to join the patrons, by the way, for early and ad-free video access, the link is in the description, but it's icavedave.com forward slash Patreon. Let's get into it. Apple Silicon was announced at WWDC in 2020 with the first Macs powered by M1 arriving in November of the same year and the reaction was astonishing. Even the very PC evangelist outlets like Linus Tech Tips had to admit, even if you were to go out of your way to point out the flaws, it's hard not to recommend either of the M1 MacBooks. They really are just that good. Since then, we've had the MacBook Pro 14 inch and 16 inch with M1 Pro and M1 Max, giving even more performance cores and massively more graphics cores. And now the M1 Ultra equipped Mac Studio with two M1 Max chips fused together using Apple's Ultra Fusion. But all of this is based on the same cores found inside the iPhone 12, Apple's A14 Firestorm performance and Ice Storm efficiency cores. So on single core performance, the $4,000 Mac Studio Ultra has the same tech behind it as the iPhone 12 mini. So just as we asked in 2020, should you buy an Intel Mac? Should you buy an M1 Mac today? Well, the Intel question was a resounding no in that video, and in retrospect, I'm really comfortable with that answer from 2020. So I stand by that today. M1 is a little bit different though, and it very much depends on your use case. If you need something for everyday computing, the M1 MacBook Air and Mac Mini are both solid choices, and you, the fact you can pick them up now for around 15% off at Apple's refurbished store, and quite often on Amazon too, and of course, Amazon affiliate links in the description to help support the channel if you need them, means that they're now a good deal still. They're also based on Apple's current platform, Apple Silicon, which means there's already macOS features that Intel Macs just aren't going to get, like running iPhone or iPad apps natively, hey, voice assistant support, I'm not going to activate your Siri stuff, don't worry. And of course, more stuff to come in the next version of macOS, potentially called Mammoth and coming this summer. And while the M1 Ultra and other high-end chips might be based on the same architecture, the massively multi-core setups means that performance is incredible and the low power consumption consumption versus the competition means quiet, cool computers that are just a much nicer experience to live with. But M2 is right around the corner, so what actually is M2 and why should you care? While Apple's M1 used four efficiency cores and four performance cores, we expect a similar setup with M2, but with the newer A15 generation cores named Avalanche and Blizzard for performance and efficiency respectively. Even though the A16 won't be too far behind it, the recent rumours suggest that the smaller node is not yielding chips in the expected volumes, leading to the base iPhone 14 to probably still have an A15 inside of it, while the A16 is reserved for the iPhone Pro models. Other sources have also suggested that Apple could use ARM version 9 in M2, but I'm not convinced, partially due to the fact that A15 uses ARM V8, but also the fact that Apple's version of ARM V8 is far more advanced than the rest of the industry, with ARM V9 almost being a catch-up version for everyone else for the features that Apple has implemented themselves. So expect general performance to be around 11% faster in single core, but up to 23% faster in multi-core performance if the iPhone 13 is anything to go by. However, graphics is expected to get a much much larger bump with not just faster graphics but also an increase from 8 to 10 cores. This could give far improved performance for the base devices such as the iMac, the MacBook Air and the Mac Mini as well as Apple's iPad Pro which is likely to get M2 fairly early in the release cycle as well seeing as the iPad Air is now equipped with the M1. The M2 iMac would replace the M1 starting at $12.99 and the M1 base configuration could stay around maybe at $10.99 with the binned M1 as standard and the non-Ethernet enabled power adapter giving it a lower cost entry point. The M2 Mac Mini would also replace the M1 at $6.99 with I hope the M1 Mini dropping to $4.99 in the lineup which is in line with its original price for the Mac Mini when it first came out. People that want a second Mac in their household or a third or a fourth really going to be easy. So there are two models of the Mac Mini. The first one is $499. And the second one, the second one adds a bigger hard drive and a faster processor for just $100 more at $599. These are the two models of the Mac Mini.
This is the most affordable Mac ever. As a matter of fact, it's the cheapest computer Apple's ever offered. Now, you might not think that's feasible, but it's basically the internals of an iPad Air, which also now has M1 inside and retails for $599, but without the need for a high-res retina touchscreen or a battery. So it could even probably be powered by the 20 watt power adapter that comes with that iPad and a USB-C cable in a smaller enclosure. It can be done, it's just whether Apple wants to or not. The M1 MacBook Pro was a strange beast when it first came out, being the last to hold onto the divisive touch bar, the same performance as the $300 less expensive MacBook Air, pretty much, but with a slightly brighter display, a bigger battery and a fan to keep that performance going for longer. Now it's not clear what the future holds for this design with M2, but my personal take would be to remove the touch bar saving costs and offering that design at $999 as a base MacBook model, not a Pro, not an Air, just a MacBook. That would then allow the MacBook Air to retake its place as the premium model with a redesign, improved mini LED display, although without the promotion of the mini LED MacBook Pros, thin bezels which would be off-white like the iMac and the notched camera module, along with bright coloured chassis and for the first time a non-wedge shaped design. Silent just like the M1 but as a premium feature. Probably around $11.99 with the rumoured 15 inch model joining the range in 2023 at $13.99 or $14.99, assuming more storage in the larger model if it gets that $14.99 price point. That MacBook Air then becomes the fashion model once again, in line with the iPad Air, above the MacBook nothing, just like the iPad nothing. Makes sense, no? Then in late 2022 or early 2023, we see the MacBook Pro in a 14 inch and 16 inch updated to M2 Pro and M2 Max. If physically possible uh, to do so I think Apple will want to do this in late 2022 but chip shortages are becoming a real thing now even for Apple that would put Apple on an annual update trajectory which I predicted in 2020 they should absolutely do this then when we see the next Ultra chip arrive in 2023 spring event, pairing M2 Max as once again a very tidy solution, and bear in mind that the Mac Studio is in essence our replacement to the iMac Pro. I'm not convinced that we'll get true iMac Pros again, there was only ever one generation, and even at the time it was basically seen as a stopgap measure between the 2013 and 2019 Mac Pros that was proving more difficult to engineer than expected. And speaking of Mac Pro, we've come full circle back to the last thing that we expect at this year's WWDC. This this is the trickiest to predict of all, because in my video in November 2020, I said that Apple would likely have slots to allow multiple SoCs to be plugged into the logic board, and potentially even have a way for them to be plugged into the 2019 Mac Pro in MPX style cards with Apple Silicon processors on board and their own I.O. out the back. These could even then hand off some of the processing tasks to the Intel chips th where those would be more effective as secondary processors, just like Compressor was able to do with other systems on the network. This would be amazing if unlikely. More likely as a smaller Mac Pro, which may also need a rename, but more on that in a few minutes. One other thing I've seen suggested is that the Mac Pro needs faster single core performance than the rest of the M1 range. This kind of puzzles me because the Xeon chips were never world leading in single core performance, and every Apple Silicon Mac is around 50% faster than the Mac Pro on single core already. In fact, in single core, the Mac Pro is about as fast as the iPhone XR with its A12 in single core. So I think the most likely outcome for the Mac Pro is a pair of M1 Ultras, maybe even more than two. They could also allow internal storage expansion or, hold on to your seats, RAM sticks. Now, the M1 Ultra and Max chips would already have their unified memory on board, which is also used by the graphics cores, so you would still get that speed advantage, but they could utilize conventional RAM sticks as another level above that, kind of like levels of cache, which would be useful for massive video files or music projects with many tens or hundreds of gigs of instruments and plugins to access. And I mentioned renaming this. Now, there's a good reason. Pro is clearly no longer the pinnacle for Apple. It's now the second of four levels with the M1 Pro chips right now being underneath the Max and Ultra. So we've also seen Apple bringing back older design language and renaming many of their systems. The studio display, for example, was a CRT beauty uh, and then also this Perspex clad thing that uh, came alongside the G4 Cube, which by the way, looks a bit like a Mac Studio. I would have probably just made it that little bit taller and called it a cube, but you know, now I'm splitting hairs. So this could be the return of the Power Mac? Please, please let this be a Power Mac with M1 power inside, all of the Ultras, all in a row. I just want this, and don't you want me to be happy?
Let me know your thoughts on this and which of the M2 Max is on your shopping list. Thanks to Evan for the suggestion to update one of our most popular videos. And also, if you want to be as cool as Evan clearly is, you can join our patrons for early and ad-free versions of all of our videos. So thanks so much, and we will see you in the next one.